So I was out here last night with the kids and I thought I'd show them a little bit about what batter boards were, what they were for, how to set them up. But I quickly realized after getting my hand hit a couple of times with a hammer that uh, that just wasn't going to work. I decided to call that a night and we'll go at it here this morning. If you've never taken on a project like this before, the toughest question to answer might be where do you start? What is the first step in selecting where your new building is going after you've done your site prep? I'd like to say that you just pick a spot and go, but that's not always the way that it can go. Your county, city, or HOA may have more to say about that than you do sometimes. If you've got a smaller property where you're running tight with your setbacks, you may want to call out a survey crew, tell them what you're doing, what your setbacks are. They'll come out for a fee, obviously, stake out your property lines, and if you ask them, they can also stake out where your building can go as well if you give them a copy of your plans. If, however, margins aren't that tight, then you can just pick an aspect of your building to line up with an aspect of your property. I have extended my driveway back to meet my workshop, so the center of my workshop I want lined up with my driveway. Give or take. So there is the arbitrary center of my workshop. From there, I will measure over half the width of my building, which is six feet. And then the same thing the other way, that'll give me the rough two front corners of my workshop. I say rough because these markings are only to give a general idea of the perimeter of the building. They are not meant to be all that accurate and to be honest I've actually gotten out of the habit of even doing these when I'm working by myself. I've been doing this long enough where I'm actually pretty good about having a mental forecast of where a building will sit. So usually I'll just throw up some batter boards two or three feet outside the range of that mental forecast, run some string lines, and I'm good to go. But for the sake of this video I thought these markings might provide a better reference for why I'm hammering sticks in the ground at the particular spots that I'm hammering them in the ground. You're welcome. So this marks the front corner. That is my center. The other corner. And so on for all four of the corners. I then put three stakes in the ground at each of the corners. For this size building, I did 12 to 18 inches or so. The larger the building, however, the further out you may want to place these stakes. Plus, if you have other contractors coming in with larger equipment, they may accidentally hit these. So it might behoove you to go ahead and move these further outside of where your building is going to be. Because you don't want these messed with or disturbed all the way through the foundation process. So in my case, kids playing, dogs running, chickens scratching. I don't want any of that around these batter boards after I've got them set up. I have chosen the highest corner of my pad to establish my elevation and levels. This first set of boards, I can just run a bubble across the top and set that level. From here, all things run downhill. Now, if I was pouring a concrete pad for my foundation, that would not be the case. Everything would be level for the most part, but since I'm using a pier and beam foundation, I wanted a slight slope to the ground under my building to facilitate water drainage and runoff, specifically the flood variety. So the boards that I attach here are going to represent the tops of my piers. Now, there is a formula that I use to determine this height, but it's not easily explained in a couple of sentences, so I'm not really going to go into it here. Just know that this is not an arbitrary height. This is by design. Then I can use those boards to get my grade reading. Now I happen to have a laser level with receiver that will make short work of this process, but you don't need this by any means. For me, once I get a solid tone on my receiver, I can lock it down. Now all I have to do is go from corner to corner, set my grade stick on top of my boards, and listen for that solid tone. 
Now, it does help to have someone hold the stick for you while you raise and lower the boards and listen for that solid tone. But that help needs to understand how the laser and grade stick interact with each other. If your help is being lazy and holding the grade stick at an angle, you're going to get an incorrect reading. And obviously, you don't want that. So my grade stick has a bubble on it that tells me when the stick is actually being held vertically, which gives me the most accurate reading. Hey, we're rocking it now. No, Kobe! Yeah, we're all right. Kobe, no. Our dog is a serial Sit. chicken chaser. Kobe! Sit. No. But he's an Australian Shepherd. What are you going to do? You cannot stop them, you can only hope to contain them. After I've got my grade set on my boards, I will go around and set a screw on the top of each of those boards. Now I'm going to run some string as such. And after I do that, I'm going to remove that string and just let it hang out on the ground nearby while I set my pins. Okay, so I got my batter board set up. One, two, three, four. And I also have my very first stake in the ground right there. And then that is going to be the corner post in which I base all of my other measurements off of. So, and how I got to that was I figured out where I wanted the center of my building to be and I put a chalk mark, a paint mark, on the ground. And then I measured over half the distance of my workshop, which was six feet, over to here. And now I'm gonna go from here over to there, 11 feet, 11 and a quarter inches, because that is the width that I want the framing aspect of my walls to be. Why 11 feet, 11 and a quarter inches instead of just an even 12 feet, you ask? Because by this point, I have already worked out the length of the bottom cord of my trusses. So I'm merely subtracting the thickness of my wall sheathing and siding plus a quarter of an inch. Now, I know that probably needs a longer explanation as to why, but just know that if you are working off of a set of plans, then you don't have to worry about the why. Those plans should tell you all of these measurements. If you're doing what I'm doing and you're building this without a formal set of plans, then that is one of the measurements that you're going to want to have to keep an eye on and figure out beforehand. It is very important to measure from the outside of whatever is being used for reference pins. In my case, I'm using half inch rebar, so that is half of an inch per corner. I could be off if I don't reference the outside of my pins with my desired measurements. So here I am measuring 20 feet back from my front corner pin, and I also know what my diagonal measurement should be. I'll go into that in just a little bit. So I'm gonna go over to my other corner pin that I've set and measure my diagonal. When my diagonal measurement and my side measurement meet, that is where I'm going to stake my third pin. And I'm also, again, going to make sure that I'm referencing the outside of my pin with that cross measurement. 
That is extremely important. I can't express that enough. And then I just repeat that process to set my fourth corner pin. And just for good measure, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that both of my diagonal measurements are the same. All right, so from this stake, we measured over 11 feet, 11 and a quarter inches and got that stake over there. And then we did A squared plus B squared, and that gave me C squared, which is 23 feet, three and a half inches. Then I measured from here over to there, and from here, over to there and when they intersected at 20 feet and 23 and three and a half inches I put a stake then I came back to my start point I measured 20 feet from that stake to the back and from this stake back 23 feet three and a half inches when the two lined up I put the fourth stake. Now I can reset my string lines to the respective set screws. And just move those screws over until the string just meets the outside of my pins. It is important once again that you take your time on this part and make sure that you haven't moved the lines too far over or not far enough. Sometimes you can move a set screw and think that you have it right, but the moment you change the tension on the string, it gives a different reading. Or sometimes you just adjust one side of a string and then you walk down and adjust the other side of the string, only to find out that you look back across the way and realize you gotta go back over to where you started and adjust that side of the string again. So just be patient. This is the time to get it right. There can be some back and forth here. This is where you want to do that back and forth because you really can't come back later in the, in the process and fix this. So take that extra moment here to make sure that you've got this right. So after making sure that those are exactly where you want them, you should be staring at some squared off string lines that also give you the elevation for the tops of your building's piers. I'll just take one final reading to make sure I didn't knock something out of whack while I was setting everything up. And I am ready to start marking out for and digging my footers. That'll be the next video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss out on this build series or any of my videos for that matter. Check me out at simplyeasydiy.com and until then.